Welcome to another Ultimate Zenof Tech camera comparison. So last time we did it with the iPhone 11 Pro Max, the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus, the Pixel 3 XL and the OnePlus 7 Pro, but since then uh, the brand new Google Pixel 4 and the OnePlus 7T Pro came out. So I'm quite curious to see which one takes the smartphone camera crown of 2019. Uh, we've also had some amazing weather here in the UK recently, unlike last time when it was pretty much cloudy and rainy all the time. So yeah, the HDR comparison in this video are even more dramatic than ever before. And as some of you might know, this video is not your regular camera comparison. This video includes 30 different test categories, testing out things such as regular shots, HDR shots, raw photography, astrophotography, macro shots, zoom shots, wide angle in daylight, wide angle in low light, wide angle stabilization, slow motion, time lapse, and pretty much everything you can think of is covered in this video. So yeah, this is probably the world's most detailed camera comparison. Not only that, but some of these 30 tests actually have multiple photo samples for each. And not only that, but we've also built a custom Zone of Tech made uh, camera rig to keep all of the phones framed up perfectly for the videos and the stabilization shots. And we've also updated all of these phones to their latest firmware, and we're also doing this blindly, so that this comparison is 100% unbiased. What I mean by this is that you'll see a letter for each phone, A, B, C, and D, for each of the shots. So I want you to grab a piece of paper or just open up your notes app on your smartphone and write down which one you prefer. And then at the end of this video, I'll reveal which one was which smartphone and you'll find out which one you really prefer. I just ask you, please, please do not spoil the results in the comments. Just, you know, let everyone do their test on their own and find out at the end which one was actually their choice. So yeah, grab some popcorn and some drinks and a notebook or your smartphone and enjoy. keep your Mac running fast and secure, check out Intego's Premium Bundle X9 that includes a number of very useful tools for your Mac. Use the link below to get a 60% discount. Okay, so starting off with some regular outdoor shots first, and here A is definitely the most natural one, B is way too blue, C is too contrasty, D is pretty good as well, so yeah, overall in this one, A is my choice here because of the color accuracy, but B is definitely the most detailed one if you zoom in. Next up we have this photo of a car, and here hands down D for me. It's extremely sharp, colors are spot on, the car is very bright, and the image isn't too dim like it is slightly on B. A and C are both very good, but a bit too warm compared to how they really look like in real life. Uh, but again, these are just my choices, so please do write down your own preference, and then at the end of the video I'll reveal which one is which. Next up we have two indoor shots in a restaurant or a pub, you know, places where people actually go to and take photos of the food or, you know, the place. And here they all actually look very, very similar. But once you zoom in on the text, you can see that C kept it all black, uh, which was how it looked like in real life, while the other ones all had this blue tone. A was the one with less noise than C and D, and if we zoom in into the ketchup on the right, again, C appears to be the sharpest one with also the least amount of noise. So my choice here is definitely C. And in that pub we also ordered something to eat, and this is how my burger looked like on all the phones. So C was very very soft, uh, if you take a look at the fries, so definitely not C. A and D are very good and also very similar, but B, wow, take a look at that. Take a look at how sharp everything is, and B also created this bokeh effect towards the coke, uh, the coke bottle, just like D did, but D wasn't as sharp on the burger and the fries. So B is definitely my choice in this case. Okay, moving on to some HDR shots, uh, this one, the first one was a fairly difficult one to take because we had the dark shadows underneath the trees, we had the bright sky, and then we also had the green of the trees which had to be preserved. And here they're all very, very good. Uh, B and D are a bit too contrasty for my taste, and between A and C, A is sharper, especially if you zoom in, so yeah, A takes this one. Okay, now we have the second HDR shot, and here, this one is again a very difficult one to take, with lots of bright highlights in the sky, uh, shadows just under the statues, and of course lots of textures and bright colors, all of which also had to be preserved. And here, C is way too contrasty once again, and it crushed the shadows completely. Uh, if we zoom onto the bottom of the middle plague, A is very soft, D is sharper, but B is definitely the sharpest one, and also the only one that managed to fully keep the texture on the bottom of the plague while also being the brightest image out of all four. So B is definitely my choice here. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, we're actually giving away a Google Pixel 4. Yes, the Google Pixel 4, the orange one, and why so orange, or oh so orange actually, we're giving this away. Uh, the giveaway ends in a month, and all you have to do if you want to participate in that is uh, be a subscriber of the channel, follow our Instagram, and on Twitter, at Zone of Tech, and leave a comment on this video saying why do you want to win the Pixel 4, and also make sure you leave your Instagram handle and the Twitter handle so that I can verify that you're actually a follower on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, but there you go, this is pretty much it. All the details are again written in the description box down below, so you can check them out as well. 
And yeah, good luck to everyone. Okay, next up we have a pretty unique test. So I want to see how good raw photography is on all of these four phones. Photographers usually prefer taking raw stills since they do preserve more detail than JPEGs and then you can edit those in post for a stunning, stunning photo. Now in the previous Ultimate Camera Comparison, we actually took two shots and I tried editing all of them in the same way. But you know, this time I wanted to make it better. So we still have two shots, but one of them has the shadows way down, while the other has the highlights way up. So one of them is underexposed, while the other is overexposed. Okay, so starting off with the underexposed shot, this is how they all look like before the editing, and this is how they look like after the editing. So what I've done is that I bumped the shadows by 100, the blacks by 100, the contrast by 80, and the exposure by 0.9 on all four shots. And here we're looking for which one managed to recover the most amount of shadows. And it seems like uh, that was actually D, but D also messed up the colors entirely. So A and B have the best dynamic range, probably B a bit more than A. If you look at the brickwork, it's, it's much sharper. Okay, next up we have the blown out image. And again, this is how they look like before the edit, and this is how they look now after the edit. So what I've done here is that I've turned down the highlights by 100, the whites by 100, and the exposure by 0.5. And C is the best one here by far, as it managed to retain a crazy amount of detail in the clouds. Okay, next up we have the macro test. So first up we have this image with multiple textures and I want to see which one of these phones actually handles uh, texture processing better. And here C is very soft and quite blurry, so definitely not C. A did the best job on the cloth, D did the best job on the carpet, and B did the best job on the zipper and the letter. So overall, I think I prefer B. Now we have the actual macro shot. So this was taken from three to four centimeters from the subject, in this case a coin, uh, as you can see from this image. And wow, C is amazingly sharp. Like, like, literally a perfect macro. Uh, keep in mind that they were all taken from the exact same distance, but only C managed to focus this up close. So, um, yeah, A kind of did it, B was worse, and D was even worse. So C easily takes this one. Okay, moving on to the zoom test, all four of these phones now have a zoom module. And here A is too noisy and dark, B is overexposed, so it's essentially between C and D. And even though C is sharper, D does have more detail. Uh, you can even see inside the apartments in some cases. So yeah, D is definitely my pick here. Now, moving on to the wide angle shots, only three of these phones have a wide angle lens. The iPhone 11 Pro Max, the Note 10 Plus, and the OnePlus 70 Pro. Now, since I obviously didn't want to reveal which one the Pixel was, you know, the one that didn't have one, um, I'm going to do this in a bit of a different way. So all the tests with the wide angle modules will have numbers instead of letters. So one, two, three in a random order. Uh, and then at the end of the video, I'm going to reveal which numbers, uh, which letters those numbers were so that you can actually add those to your calculation. And here they all look very, very similar. I don't really like the colors of three, even though it's the most natural one out of all of them. Uh, one and two look pretty much identical, but if you zoom in, you can see that two is quite a bit sharper Sharper. So yeah, two takes this one. Moving on to the panorama test, some of these phones can take both a regular as well as a wide angle panorama. So first, this is the regular panorama on all the phones. And here in terms of stitching, B and C are the best ones. Uh, B is even better since it didn't mess up the rail bar so bad, but then at the same time, we didn't really have the exact same field of view. C is a bit too dark, so I don't like C. D is extremely low res. I mean, wow, take a look at that sharpness added in post. It's, it's horrible. So it's between A and B here, and I do like B the most due to its better stitching and more detail if you zoom onto the trees to the right, for example. Also, something that I want to point out is that A has a 26.2 megapixel panorama, B has 29.3, C has 22.9, and D has 5.4 megapixels. So B also has the highest resolution. And like I said, two of these phones can also take wide angle panoramas. And here, again, we're using numbers as I don't want to hint out which phone is which. So between two and three, two has a lot of distortion on the rail bar. Uh, so three does take this one. Moving on to 4K video, three of these phones can do 4K 60. One of them, the Pixel 4, can only do 4K 30. But in terms of the quality of the video, C is way too saturated, so I don't like C at all. Interesting how D is very zoomed in, by the way, even though we were using the same camera rig uh, and the same distance on all the phones. B and D do get more detail in the shadows. At the beginning of the clip, under the trees, uh, towards the middle of the video, B and D are now very contrasty, and A actually retains the most amount of detail in the shadows. So yeah, overall, I think I do prefer A in this one. Oh, if you're enjoying this video so far, make sure you subscribe and notifications for more in-depth tech videos like this one, hopefully is, and you know, it's not finished yet, so stay tuned and keep watching. Okay, next up we have the microphone zoom test, and I'll let you watch the clips here first, but I personally went with A. Okay, so this is a microphone test of all the four phones, so this is zoom out. We also want to check out the uh, microphone zoom quality, so we're actually going to zoom in now. Okay, we are now zooming in. 
Okay, so all the four phones are now zoomed in, which means that you should be able to hear me louder, hopefully. So this is how phone A sounds, this is how phone B sounds, this is how phone C sounds, and this is finally how phone D sounds. So I'm going to comment which one do you think sounds better in terms of microphone zoom quality, and now we're going to zoom back out. Okay, we're now zooming out. Okay, and the sound quality should be back to how you uh, heard it initially. Okay, moving on to video, but now taking with a wide angle module, here we have numbers again because the Pixel 4 does not have a wide angle lens. And here, all three of them are actually very, very good. So number one is quite soft. Uh, so yeah, definitely not one. Two and three are very similar. Three is a bit sharper and three also manages to keep the clouds perfectly exposed while two blows them out entirely towards the end. So definitely three for me in this one. Moving on to the slow motion test, here A is the slowest out of all of them, but unfortunately A didn't manage to capture the coke and the Mentos bit as it stopped the recording way, way too early. All the other ones kept on recording until I actually stopped them. Also, I want to mention that we actually ran a few uh, test runs and practice runs mostly for A because it's really tricky to capture slow motion with A. And unfortunately, as you can probably tell, it didn't manage to capture the actual scene. But the other three did, and here I'm very impressed with C. So it's slower than the other two, and it also seems to be the sharpest one. So yeah, definitely C in this case. Okay, now moving on to the stabilization test. This is in 4K60 on all the phones, except for the Pixel once again, which can only do 4K30. And when I'm walking, B and D are just outstanding. So they're both as stable as if I was literally using a tripod, which I wasn't. So yeah, simply incredible. Uh, but D does appear to be slightly more stable than B is, so in this one I'm picking D. Okay, and now I am running, and they're all pretty good here, but B appears to be the best one here as well. So now what about stabilization but with a wide angle lens? Again, only two of these phones can shoot video with a wide angle camera, the iPhone and the Note. Now the OnePlus just got an update to Android 10, uh, the OnePlus 7T Pro actually comes with Android 10 out of the box, but it can only do 1080p video by the way and not 4K, so that's why I decided to leave the OnePlus out of this test because this is a 4K 30 stabilization which the OnePlus cannot really do. And when it comes to walking they're both very good, but number three has some insane stabilization, so it looks as if it's on a gimbal, whereas it's obviously not. Now when it comes to running, number three does appear to be more stable than number two is, so three definitely takes this one. Okay, now let's see which phone actually focuses faster, and here it seems like B just didn't want to focus on the far bridge at all, uh, D was slightly slower than A and C, and between those two, if we slow down the footage, it seems like C actually focuses the fastest. Okay, now moving on to the time-lapse test, this is probably the test that I'm most excited for, and also the test that I'm always the most disappointed about when I get to see the actual results, and you'll see why in just a second. So even though time-lapses are very easy to do on the processor, since you just take photos every few seconds or every few minutes, and then you combine those photos into a video at the end of the time-lapse. So yeah, realistically, these phones could have been easily able to do even 8K time-lapses, but they only do 1080p time lapses, not even 4K, 1080p all of them. This was a five minute recording and during that recording, they all created a time lapse of a different length. So I've actually changed the speed so that they all match. And here, if we zoom in, C appears to have the most amount of detail. Uh, D is definitely the worst, B is extremely close to C, and I actually prefer the colors of B. Overall, I do like B the most here because of the exposure as well, uh, since C was a bit too dim and warm, even though uh, it was the sharpest. Okay, moving on to some portrait mode shots. Uh, these were taken with a telephoto lens on all of these phones, and in terms of background separation, well, B messed up my fingers, so B's out. Uh, C was a bit too soft on my face, uh, D messed up the water in between my fingers, so yeah, A has the best background separation. Now, when it comes to the actual image quality in general, I do like B the most, like color-wise, uh, since D was way too contrasty and B also perfectly exposed the sky. So my choice here is actually B, that's the one that I would honestly post on Instagram, but I would have to crop it to mask the background separation on my finger. And now we have portrait mode once again, but this time with a wide angle lens. And once again, the pixel is out because it doesn't have a wide angle lens, so we'll have to be using numbers here again. And in this one too, is quite blurry. I don't know what's happened here. Uh, one is very good, and I think I actually like this one the most. Uh, S3 has some really good background separation, but uh, I'm all blue, whereas my turtleneck was pure black. So the colors in three were way off. Okay, so now we have the low light test. Now all of these photos that you're going to see in a second were actually taken with night mode enabled on each of these phones. So starting off with this first one here, and D messed up the sky entirely, so I don't know what happened here, and there's also a ton of noise in D. Uh, B was way too warm and it messed up the uh, inside of the building, and A and C are both very, very good. So overall, I do like C the most here, since it's the most balanced image, uh, with even better exposure and not as much sharpening in post as A has.
has. Now the second low light shot here is of this building and this is a fairly tricky shot because we want to get some of the stars in the sky visible as well uh, and also the inside of the flats perfectly exposed. And A messed up pretty badly here so uh, the plants are all blurry, the inside of the apartments are a bit overexposed so definitely not A, uh, B is too contrasty, D is quite noisy in the sky even though it did get all the plants perfectly in focus but C is almost perfect. So the sky is the best one out of all of them so for me at least C definitely takes this one. Now, for the third low light shot, I wanted to do something a bit more special. So since all of these phones actually support a long exposure slash a tripod slash an astrophotography mode, I wanted to see which one of them would actually do best when shooting the night sky. And here it's pretty obvious that B and D are by far the best. So B did a very good job, but D is just on another level. Like, wow, just, just a night and day difference between the two, literally. You can not only see more stars, but there is almost zero noise in this photo. So extremely, extremely impressed with D here. But what if you don't want to use the night mode and you just want to take a photo with the flash? Well, in that case, D is straight up garbage. Uh, B is horrible as well, so it's between A and C. C is a bit brighter and also sharper on my face, so C does take this one. And now we have a second image taken with a flash. Uh, in this case, B and D are both very bad, extremely noisy and soft. And between A and C, uh, C has less noise and sharper image overall. So once again, C does take this one. So now what if you want to use the zoom lens in low light? Well, this was taken with a 10x zoom on all of these, and C is basically unusable. A is right after, B is quite good, uh, you can almost read the text, but D is just so much sharper and cleaner, so D easily takes this one. So now, what about using the wide-angle lens in low light? Well, once again, we're using numbers here, as I don't want to reveal which one the pixel is just yet, and as you can probably tell, 3 is disqualified right away. It's way too dim, and between 1 and 2, I actually prefer 2, as it has slightly less noise in the sky and an overall sharper image. And next up we have low light video with a back facing camera, uh, this was taken in 4K30 on all the phones and here D is just way too bright and noisy so definitely not D. Now towards the end of the video A and C blew out the highlights inside the building but B managed to keep all of those perfectly exposed uh, while also having the sharpest image so definitely B in this case. So that was the back facing camera, time to test out the front facing camera. Again don't forget to write down your own choices, all the letters for each test on a piece of paper or in your smartphone's notes app and then at the end of the video I'll reveal which phone was which letter and then you know which phone you actually prefer. Okay so I've taken this one right here in our recording studio. Uh, now if you're wondering which ones of these are inverted, well those would be A and C. I really don't like B, like it messed up the colors way 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 too much. A is just too contrasty so here I think I like D the most. Moving on to front facing HDR and B is the most natural one by far. But it did blow out the clouds quite a bit, uh, the other ones all did a very good job so my favorite one here is actually A even though yes I know it's heavily heavily processed. And now we have the wide angle test with a front facing camera. So all of these phones can take a wide angle selfie and holy smokes. So take a look at B and D. Not only are they the widest, uh, the same angle it seems, but they managed to keep the sky perfectly exposed while both A and C mess it up entirely. And even though it's a bit too dark, uh, D definitely takes this one for me, just because of the even better exposure on the sky when compared to B. Okay, next up we have the front video plus the microphone test and here I actually picked B. Okay, this is a front facing camera test on all of these four phones. Uh, this is shot in 4K30 on the phones that support 4K30, even on the phone that supports 4K60 that's still shot in 4K30, and 1080p um, 30 on the other phones that do not support 4K. So let me know how the exposure is, the HDR processing, and also let me know how the sound quality is on all of these four phones. So this is the sound coming from A, this is the sound coming from B, this is the sound coming from C, and this is the sound coming from D. So let me know in the comments which one looks better and also which one sounds better. Now when it comes to portrait mode, but this time taken with the front facing camera, all of them are pretty good. I would say that C probably has the best background separation, D as well, B has this gradual transition in terms of the blur effect, but my personal favorite is definitely C. So it's really well balanced in terms of the colors, the exposure, and a very very good background separation. And now we have a low light shot taken with a front facing camera and <laughs> Whoa, take a look at that. So B is very blurry and pretty much unusable. A is decent, but C and D, especially D, just look incredible. I mean, D is just on another level with very little to no noise. The clouds are perfectly visible. So D definitely, definitely takes this one for me and I hope for everyone as well. But what if you want to take a selfie in low light, but this time with a front facing flash, you know, the screen brightness um, and the retina flash. And here A really messed up entirely. B is just too dim. So same as before, it's really between C and D. 
I do actually like C a lot this time, especially since it takes, uh, it is the sharpest image, but overall, once again, D takes this one, as it's the only one that got the background perfectly exposed as well, with minimal noise. And finally, we have front-facing low-light video. Now, D was my choice here, but I'll let you guys watch the clips and you decide. Okay, so this is a front-facing camera system, low light on all of these four phones. All of them are now recording in 30 frames per second. They should have been a different resolution. So yeah, let me know in the comments which one has a better low light video with the front-facing camera. A, B, C, or D. Okay, so now that we finished all the tests, let's take a look at the results, you know, for both of us. So in my case, I had A five times, I had B nine times, I had C ten times, and I had D 11 times. Now when it comes to the numbers for the wide-angle lenses, so number one was C, number two was A, and number three was B. And I had number one one time, I had number two twice, and the number three three times. So that means plus one C, plus one A's, uh, and plus three B's. So in that case I have seven A's, 12 B's, 11 C's, and also 11 D's. So which one was which? Well some of you might have guessed and these are the final, final results. So A was actually the Samsung Galaxy Note 10. B was the iPhone 11 Pro. C was the OnePlus 7 Pro, 7T Pro actually. And D was the Pixel 4 XL. So there we go. In my case, it seems like I liked the iPhone the most this time. Previously, I liked the, uh, the Note 10 Plus in the last video. Then the OnePlus 7T Pro and the Pixel 4 had the exact same score, for me at least, 11 points. And then uh, the Note 10 Plus was the last, which interesting enough, the Note 10 Plus, like I said, it actually won uh, the previous blind camera comparison. So there you go, these were my choices, but which ones were actually yours? Let me know in the comments, and please do not spoil the results. So let everyone watch the video until this point and find out on their own which phone was which, but feel free to point out and, you know, comment which one you actually preferred the most. Like, I was expecting the iPhone to win because it has the best camera for video, but I wasn't expecting the OnePlus 7T to do so well. Like, I actually picked the OnePlus 7T more than the Note 10 Plus and, you know, the same amount of times that I picked the Pixel 4. So, that's really, really impressive on OnePlus. So OnePlus, if you're watching this video, really good job with the camera. Pixel 4, again, really good job, but, you know, I wanted to see a wide-angle lens. Unfortunately, we don't have that. We don't have 4K60 either, so hopefully next year. Yeah, if you have enjoyed this video, definitely subscribe and enable notifications for more insanely detailed videos, uh, tech videos like this one, hopefully, was. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. This was a massive video to make, so uh, a like would be really, really appreciated. And don't forget about that Pixel uh, 4 giveaway that I mentioned before. So again, all the details are in the description box down below. So thank you for watching. I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenofec, signing out. Cheers.